I'm William Kumwembe with Business Time on Times. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines. And in the program today, maize farmers upbeat as experts project good harvest. We have a report. And Malawi ranked among innovative countries. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned if you could. Hello and welcome. Maize is Malawi's staple crop. Movement of its prices to either direction exerts pressure on the country's headline inflation, which is largely driven by food prices and the economy at large. The staple grain as part of the food component constitutes 45.2% in the consumer price index. Now, there is optimism among both farmers and some experts that the country would have a bumper yield this season thanks to good rainfall pattern. Our journalist Gary Samati spoke with some of the farmers on the outlook and now reports. The fields are green and the yield looks promising. Most farmers seem optimistic to make the most of their toil this season. Richard Paolo is a subsistence farmer from Chirazulu district. He has been producing maize, Malawi staple crop, for over a decade. He says, by this time last year, his maize field was not looking as promising as is now. This, Paolo says, is an assurance of a possible high yield this season, thanks to the good rainfall pattern. Puziropayas, another maize producer but youthful, hails from Blanta. He believes he will make a fortune from farming this year. Farmers Union of Malawi. Last year, I benefited from growing maize. I harvested 18 bags of maize. Regardless, when I compare last year's yield to this year's maize so far, I think I will harvest more this year. The maize might be different. Some planted in October, so their maize is at a different level when compared to those that planted late. But it still looks like this year people will harvest a lot of bags of maize. When we also regard those that had access to fertilizer, and if rainfall will still be favorable, we will have a lot of maize this year. agricultural season. The projection has been attributed to increased access to inputs through the Affordable Inputs Program, coupled with average rainfall amounts across the country. The AIP, budgeted at 160 billion kwacha, about 78% of the 245 billion kwacha allocation to the entire agricultural sector. The way I see it, we have good harvest this year. Families across this is the due country. to the amount of rainfall we have had. Already, some development partners were baffled with the option, especially that almost the entire chunk is aimed at propelling production of one crop, maize. The crop staple grain, as part of the food component, has a bearing on inflation movement as it constitutes 45.2% in consumer price index. Malawi has been ranked third among most innovative low-income countries by the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. WIPO is a global forum for intellectual property services, policy information and cooperation. Globally, Malawi has been ranked 111. The country is ranked with Tanzania, which is positioned at 88 globally, Rwanda, which has been rated at 91. Justin Quayle reports. 
This was an innovation symposium. The symposium comes on top of other hub of innovations such as MHub and the Polytechnics Innovation Hub. These are efforts to see Malawi being an innovative country which moves and adapts to changes in technology. These efforts seem to be bearing fruits as a recent report from the World Intellectual Properties Organization has ranked Malawi third among most innovative countries in lower income economies. Malawi has been ranked together with Tanzania, which has ranked 88 globally, and the first country among low income countries, and Rwanda as the second country, which has ranked 91 globally, and Malawi has been ranked 111 globally. According to the report, economic regulatory frameworks have a huge bearing on innovation and an economy as a whole. The report says the economic and regulatory spheres within countries can have enormous impact on their level of innovation and vice versa. As innovation in turn becomes an economic driver stimulating further investment. Even though this is the case, a latest report on use of technology from the Malawi Communications Regulatory Authority, MACRA, and National Statistical Office, NSO, shows that a low population of the country is able to use technology. For example, about 37% of households in the country own a mobile telephone. Access to internet service among individuals is at 14.6% and 2.8% of individuals own a computer. Speaking in an interview, ICT Association of Malawi ICTAM President Bram Fuzulani said the report by World Intellectual Properties Organization indicates how the country can move fast with innovations if challenges facing the technological sector. It does reflect um, some of the mentioned uh, challenges yeah. at the country level. But also, I think it also addresses or it speaks to the current situation where there are a lot of intervention uh, from, from various institutions uh, bring different things to the uh, education. So there is an opportunity. IT expert Dr. Matthew Zimtumbuka said a lot of things have indeed improved in terms of research innovation. He added that a lot has also changed in technology advancements by different individuals and companies. If you look at Malawi today and 20 years ago, you find what we must invest. And then if you look at the, even the Poli and Chango today, they are not the same as the Chango and Poli of my time. They are doing far more. I mean, you could probably new lab, they are Americans. They are doing a lot of digital stuff there. Mm. Poli has done the ventilators, you know, it reflects therefore. I'm looking at the research in universities mm. today on innovation, innovation mm. and I'm singling out Mast, Poli and Shanko as examples. Malawi is advancing. The world is changing every day and it is only a quick adaptation of technology that a country like Malawi will benefit from the modern world. Now, in other business news, first round tobacco estimates are expected to be released next week. This is according to Regulator Tobacco Commission. TC Corporate Planning and Development Manager Hellings Nasoni said crop assessment would be concluded on Friday this week. Some agricultural experts project that the country would have a good crop with possible surge in output this season as rainfall patterns have been favorable in most tobacco producing areas. By far, tobacco remains Malawi's top foreign exchange earner, although its share has been falling sharply in the past 10 years. And the Reserve Bank of Malawi says economic growth prospects for 2021 remains uncertain. This is mainly due to the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. RBM Governor Wilson Banda says since the beginning of 2021, the COVID-19 infectious infections and fatalities have increased sharply and this has compelled the government to reimpose re strict containment measures. In a monetary policy statement, Banda says as a result of the jump in COVID-19 cases, domestic economic activities which started to rebound in the second half of 2020 has moderated. Remember this is Business Time, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Sugar manufacturer Ilovo Sugar Malawi has reiterated impact of smuggling of the commodity to its business. Ilovo Sugar Malawi Managing Director Lekani Karandula said in an interview that the vice has had a huge bearing on its revenue base. Gary Samadhi caught up with Karandula. We are still hampered by this issue, especially from uh, the Zambian uh, side of uh, the borders. Uh, the Zambian kwacha has been depreciating a lot more rapidly than uh, the Malawian uh, kwacha, and um, that leads to imbalances in terms of the competitive prices of uh, uh, not just sugar but uh, all products uh, that are made in Zambia compared to products that are made in Malawi. So we continue to see an influx of um, illegal supplies of various goods like um, uh, sugar, flour, uh, even poultry products coming through from uh, the borders and not even going through the former posts where they would be paying the appropriate taxes to government. So it continues to be a setback for uh, Ilovo and many other businesses uh, in the country and indeed a setback for our Malawi Revenue Authority because they're losing out on tax revenue that uh, would uh, be earned if uh, the local producers were uh, trading properly instead or indeed if uh, those that are importing uh, those goods were uh, declaring properly and uh, paying the necessary taxes. It um, sets us back in the sense that um, uh, it means we're selling less in the domestic market than we would love to and therefore uh, that's a drag on our profitability. We would like to uh, see ourselves selling much more in the domestic market and um, improving our profitability more rapidly than uh, is the case now because of um, uh, these um, uh, setbacks. Now, the Center for Social Accountability and Transparency, a governance and accountability watchdog in Malawi, was born to promote collaborative engagement between citizens and policyholders. The firm has been advocating accountability and transparency from public officers and officers. Willy Kambandira is its managing director and sheds more light on the rationale of the move. Yeah, um, I think matters of transparency and accountability are very important when we are talking about safeguarding of public resources. When there is transparency uh, in management of resources, obviously there is no corruption. There is no looting of public resources. And again, if there is transparency, um, I think provision of services is up to standard because all the things are done in an open thing and everyone is there to see what is happening and people are able even to question duty bearers to say the service is not worth that amount. So in that regard I think it is really very important and again I think when there is transparency um, in public safe delivery uh, there is fair competition when it comes to award of government contracts because government contracts are awarded through a transparent uh, process and everyone appreciates and everyone shares the, the KK equally. So uh, transparency indeed plays a very critical role when we are talking about management of, of public uh, services. Yes, uh, a good question. I think when there is no accountability uh, in management of resources, obviously uh, there is feasting by some duty bearers on public resources. And the primary victims are the poor people in the villages. Because what it means, there will be no medicines in the hospitals. The roads will be of poor quality. Um, education service will be of poor quality. So lack of transparency and accountability in short promotes corruption and abuse of public resources. Yeah, um, one most important aspect of our work, what we are doing, in the first place we've been engaging the government to make sure that they present before the next sitting of parliament an amended bill of the Public Finance Management um, Act. Remember, we are using um, Public Finance Management Act of 2003. And if you look at this act, it has many, many weaknesses. One, the act doesn't provide stiffer penalties for violation. 
If anything, what we see when someone is suspected of abusing resources, they are just transferred from one district to, to another. Or they are just transferred from one department to, to another. So we have proposed it in the current bill to make sure that the government puts in place very stiffer penalties for, for violation. And again, as an organization, we are also investing very much in citizen engagement. We want to build the capacities of the citizens so that they are able to interrogate duty bearers. They are able to hold those in power um, accountable. So I think as an organization, these are some of the things that we are, we are advocating for, including um, the speedy, speedy development of guidelines for access to information because access to information act is also one important aspect when we are talking about accountability and and transparency as well as safeguarding of public resources oh with that story we've also come to the end of today's edition of the program business time a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country on behalf of the entire production team my name is william kumwembe but Always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Stay safe and bye for now.